Good evening and thank you for calling. This is uh, Monday the 15th of calling. Thank you for watching. It's Monday the 15th of June and welcome to Goodwin Live. So just to let you know before um, we carry on, the uh, first thing I want to tell you is there are no longer Wednesday shows. We're just doing to do Monday only. Wednesday, I'll be watching uh, the football. It'd be great to see football back on television. But for us here, we'll be doing Mondays only on the Goodwin Live with lots of guests coming up over the forthcoming weeks. So a very, very exciting time ahead. Quite a lot of things going on at uh, our end. We're hoping to develop a new concept with boxing over the next month or two, which will be very interesting. Um, and I've personally been busy doing my financial services work. And if you don't watch the lockdown lowdowns on Facebook Live and you're interested in that side of thing, go into our Goodwin Boxing Live um, Goodwin Boxing YouTube channel and you can pick up not only the Lockdown Lowdown uh, shows but you can also pick up all the previous shows that have been shown on here. So uh, we're going to deal with go through tonight who we've got on and I'm going to go backwards to back to front as I always do. 7.30 Sajid Abid. Now Sajid has had 10 fights, won 9, lost 1 and the only one he lost was when he went to Jeddah and took on a very big challenge, but we'll talk to, to, to Sajid more about that uh, later on. At 20 past seven, we welcome Brian G on. Brian G, who works over at State of Mind Fitness in Hammersmith, and he's an unsung trainer who's doing a fantastic job. And I'll be chatting to Brian about the, the boxers he has that he looks after and what he does and how he improves boxers. 10 past seven, <clears throat> we've got undefeated 4-0 Bradley Spencer. And um, we'll be chatting to Bradley about his career so far. He got married as well, uh, which put a bit of a block on his career for a bit. Uh, but first, um, and last but not least, Jake Spring. He's a 26-year-old um, chap from Sittingbourne in Kent. He's had a bit of a strange career, you could say. He debuted in 2014 and didn't box again until 2019. I was very impressed with him when I saw him on his Goodwin bow in uh, 2019. So we're going to have a chat with Jake. See what he's been getting up to in lockdown. Let's catch up with Jake. How are you, Jake? Uh, I'm good, thank you, Steve. How are you? Oh, not bad. What have you been up to? Uh, not much, mate. Just seen too much of the treadmill, that's all. Oh, seriously? Is that, are you, yeah. have, you, have you been working or doing anything, or have you just literally been. Nah, just nothing, mate. Just staying away. Social distancing, just stand on the treadmill, doing a few bits of things with that. Just want to stay ready so I can go straight back into camp. Yeah, no, exactly. So it, obviously we don't know which way boxing is going at the moment, do we? So is it no, hard no. to keep motivated when? Is it... It, it's not hard to stay motivated because you want to ch chase your dreams no matter what. But like, um, it's you just want to know when the ball's going to get rolling again because obviously. I, I had like a 16 week camp to get ready for my third pro fight and then for three, three or four days and then this coronavirus shut everything down so I just had a little bit of time off just to let my body recover and start getting ready again so it's, uh, it's, it's frustrating but it's nothing we can do about that No, that's true So in effect you've had two careers of one fight each, right? So we've had the 2014 <laughs> career and the 2019 career What's the difference between the two Jake Springs, the 2014 version and the 1920 version? What, what's the difference? The 2014 was, I was just 20 years old and I didn't want nothing to do with amateur boxing anymore. I wanted to go straight into the pro ranks and I had one pro fight and I boxed well. I did box well, but I froze and you can see I froze and anybody that knows me, they know I froze in that fight as well. I still box well because I come away with a win and... Obviously, I had time out due to family reasons. And I come back and everything, my head was clear. Training went perfect. And I developed, matured, like with age and my strength over the five years. The five or four, uh, sorry, four years, I've developed my man strength and it made me mature. And I've got to say, I was, I was very impressed in your fight with Jamie in November. I thought you showed, I thought it was amazing considering you'd been five years out. So, 26, you're still a very, very young man as far as boxing is concerned, aren't you? So, yeah. what, what, where, do you, where do you want to go? What do you want to achieve out of the sport? Uh, it's everybody's dream to say they want to become a, a world champion. But 
for me to win a British title. A British title is the title that I want. It's that, that's what means the most to me. And obviously, my dad he puts loads and loads of time and effort in with me. So for me to win a British title, uh, that's that's my boyhood dream. And how how important is your dad in your whole boxing career? Oh, uh, my! If my dad my dad turned away from the sport, I'd walk away with it with him as well because at the end of the day I'm loyal to my dad I won't go anywhere else I won't help alongside with, with my dad but he's been there since I've been a nine year old boy he didn't want me to box never wanted me to box and Did I kept no no I was playing football I was playing for Arsenal Academy I gave up to play playing for Arsenal to box and my dad because dad boxed all through his life he was like I don't want you to do it and I kept pushing and pushing and then one day he just took me to the gym at St Mary's that was with uh, Charlie Rumble when had St Mary's at the time. And from there, me, me and Dad just gelled. I love my dad to pieces. My best friend, he, he motivates me so much. No, he's a good, he's a good man, your dad. He, he, he didn't want to come on here, though. He didn't, he didn't no, want to be no. on your <laughs> in the background, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah. So, so down there, who, who, do you, who do you spar with or train with down there? Just, uh, well, obviously because of this coronavirus, it's just me and Dad at the minute. But apart from that, it's uh, my, my dad, uh, Joe and Jamie. So I spar with yeah. Jamie and Joe, obviously, because they're a lot heavier than me. They cruise the weights a lot heavy, so their strength is there. But if they're young as well, so which is good. It keeps me active. They're, they're very sharp as well. So. And talking about Joe and Jamie, they're two other lads that have turned professional, haven't they? And their debut was a bit scuppered by the virus as well. So... You, yeah. yeah, and they're both very talented kids, and, and yeah, so it's a very good stable you've got down there with your dad. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. We're all good. Well, we're not friends. We're like a family now. So we're all, all family. We've known each other for years and years. It's just it's a great atmosphere, and it, it's good because we always push each other, and we know we're going to get fitter every time. Every time we train, because we want to outdo each other all the time. Yeah. And, and obviously, there's not been a lot of boxing, even boxing news. What did, what did you make of this fury? Joshua announcement last week about a fight that, that might happen in a year or two. So what did you make of it? Uh, I, I hope it does happen. Uh, I'm going to say this because I'm very open-minded. Uh, Joshua, I lost a lot of respect for him. So, uh, he might say, people might say, uh, they disagree with me, but he, if he didn't write that, someone wrote that for him, he didn't have to say that. He could have expressed it in a different way. So I've lost a lot of respect for Joshua outside but for boxing he's done great things for British boxing but I, I love Fury just the way he is how he boxes and I hope Fury beats him yeah, there, there has been a lot I've seen a lot on social media you've had a lot of backing for Joshua but there has been an awful lot of condemnation where people have said I'm never going to buy a t ticket for him again I'm not going to support him again so he seems to have alienated whatever, I mean, whatever the views of it but he seems to have alienated a lot of people with that and that that's a shame, but it, it does yeah, seem yeah. to, whether that was, you know, however it was, it, it doesn't seem to have um, gone well for him, that, that, that chat. But, you know, at the end of the day, I suppose he says what he thinks and he's, yeah, entitled, to have an opinion, he's entitled to have an opinion like we all are, you know, so. No, of course, and that's what I feel. I don't want people to, because I've just said that, I don't want people to think nothing different of me because I've got, I've got no, black in my family. No. I've got black in my family and I'm not racist at all, but. But I know, just... I, know what, I know what you're saying is that what you're saying, which is true, is Tyson Fury in an interview had said, had replaced that with the alternative. I think he may have got himself shot down and suspended, mightn't he? And that's, is, is that's that the key. That's the key. Fury, I mean, that Fury, I think, has said that himself. He said, if, I, if I'd said the same thing, I would have probably been suspended. No, 100%. Like I said, I don't take nothing away from Joshua. He's done great things for British boxing. I have, a lot of respect, I have a lot of respect for him in British boxing. But he... It all swings some roundabouts, but... Yeah. But, I mean, it'd be a great fight if it, if it does happen. But what, what I found strange about that, you and that, these fighters have got other commitments. You've technically got... Joshua's got to fight Wilder. Fury, um, sorry, Fury's got to fight Wilder. Joshua's got to fight Pulev. Dylan White is supposed to be mandatory next in February next year. And they're making a fight. To me, that smack more of just doing something for headlines and maybe yeah, yeah. To, to, to try and get something else out in the public domain rather than what was there. And I, I felt that that was what that was all about, really. Yeah, 100%. And their biggest upset is going to be that they're focusing on that, the different fight already, that what they're going to have. So it's, you, don't, you don't know what's going to happen. It's boxing. So Well, you know that. 
So, so going forward, obviously, you want to get yourself active, busy, and get your, build yourself towards titles. I mean, you're going to go on a... I mean, I, I don't think it will take four fights and you'll be ready for titles. I, I see no reason why you won't be able to fast track there. But it's just a frustration, isn't it, of not knowing when things are going to resume. Yeah. You know, it's hard. It's hard. No, it's that, it's exactly, exactly that. Yeah. And that's what me and Dad were just discussing and we were going to talk to you, to you about it, that oh, I want to come back yeah. and... Get, get ready for a six rounder because we know now we're yeah. losing out time we're losing out time again because we don't know when this virus is going to happen so no I, yeah, I, I do agree with you I thought four or five fights if we're ready then I think that that's perfect timing yeah because listen some kids are some kids are eight and oh nine and oh are not ready but you've got you've got the skill set you've got the background you've got the amateur experience you've got a great training setup you won't need as much time or fights as other people to get there you know, I think yeah, you'll, be, nah. you'll be more than capable of winning a, an area title in fight number six. Is, you know, I think or six or seven with no problem, I think. So. No, I, pre- I appreciate forward, that. Yeah, but we're looking forward to the future, Jake. Thanks a lot for coming yeah. on tonight. No worries. Really Thank you, mate. You, you too, care. mate. Take care. Yeah. See you later, mate. Bye-bye. 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 And that was Jake Springer, who is one of the Goodwin boxers that I have very, very high hopes for. I think he's got a hell of a big future ahead of him. Now, a young man... Um, uh, Tim Brown. Uh, you were not Tim. I'm not doing the questions here. Happy to do questions on Sundays, but we're not doing. This isn't about me today. It's about the people I'm interviewing. But I'm happy to answer that for you. Um, the next guest I've got on is a young man by the name of Bradley Spencer, who's four and oh. Um, he has had a bit of a stop-start career, but I suppose getting married didn't help it. Um, he made his debut back in 2018, so he's been going for just over two years. He's had four fights and, um, but he's, you know, he's, he's been, he's obviously had more important things to worry about than boxing, but let's chat and see where Bradley is now. You know, he, what he's been getting up to. Bradley, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good, mate. How are you? Yeah, you look quite slim, actually. I was expecting to see you blown up a lot, eh? Uh, I'll put in a bit, but I'm try- trying hard not to, you know, trying to, trying to keep... So what, what do you, come on, let's have a secret. What do you weigh now? Uh, honestly, no idea. I've uh, I've not even looked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what have, mean... been, what have you been up to? I mean, are you back PTing again now? Yeah, yeah, I, I started back at work a couple of weeks back now, thankfully. Um, I've never been so excited, actually, to go back to work. So yeah, back working. It's no PT at the moment, just classes, really outdoor sessions, small yes. groups. Just doing what we can do, you know. And how have you found how have you found the take up for the classes since you come back? So, yeah, really, really busy. The first week was a bit touch and go. Um, I think people are still a bit skeptical about coming out. But yeah, no, it's, uh, it's been fully booked every session since. So, oh yeah, really? It's... So you haven't found any? You're not looking and thinking, oh my god, I'm, people are dropping off or anything like that. So. It's... We've been, we've been really busy. I mean, it's hard at the moment. We're only limited to five people a session anyway. At the moment. Right. But still, we've been doing sort of four or five classes back to back, and it's been been really busy. Oh, that is good. So, so it's working okay for you. Yeah, going so, well. So when, so how long ago is it? You you got? I mean, obviously, you've been slightly inactive. You've only had one fight since October eighteen, haven't you? One fight in now eighteen yeah. months. Yeah, it's, it's explain to people. Point. Explain to people why that is. Why you've been in? You had three quick fights, didn't you? And then you had an eighteen-month inactivity. First, the first three fights, we we got in the first sort of year, you know. So it was quite a busy first year. Then I think it was after the third one, I injured my eyes, so I was out for a little bit. After that, mm-hmm. obviously, I got married, had my honeymoon where I was away for a long time. So it was just sort of hard trying to fit that time in to get a full camp in. And obviously, we had a full camp January for the March, so that got cancelled. And yeah, here we are now, still, uh, yeah. still. So your your wife is she very supportive of your boxing career? Yeah, thankfully she's really good. She's a great help, especially you know it's like in in the training camps that discipline there. She's always giving me that push as well. So it's it's good to have have her behind me. You need a good woman behind you in anything in life. I think that uh, if you if you've not got a good one, then it does it definitely has an impact on you. So tell uh, us about your your training setup. Where you train and who trains you? So I'm, I'm training in Harrow now with Matthew Hake. Um, that last that fight I was meant to have in March, that was our first training camp together. And yeah, it was it was great. We had a really, really good camp. As you said, I, I'd been out for a little while before then. So it was sort of quite hard getting back into it. But no, I got there and it was, it was brilliant. We were raring to go. But before that, I was obviously with Barry at State of Mind. Uh, again, Barry was a great coach. 
me so much over the years. But it was just that change yeah. and going, you know, it's, it's good to mix things up and change it a bit. Yeah. So, so have you still got the same enthusiasm that you had? Because I remember how enthusiastic you was when you first turned pro. Are you still as enthusiastic as that? I, I, to be honest with you, I'm more enthusiastic now. Um, I started to lose it a little bit, like you said, with that inconsistency. There. It's very hard to keep that motivation going. Um, but before getting with Matt, I was sort of like, I was starting to lose it a little bit. And Matt sort of like really gave me that, that push again and got me back in love with the sport. Um, and that last training camp we had was, it was a great training camp. I was with Brian, did quite a lot of sparring with Daniel Mendes. And it was good. Uh, there was a great buzz. It was good to be back. He's very, I mean, he's, uh, Matthew's very, um, he's very motivated, isn't he? He loves the sport yeah, yeah. and he's very committed to it. And that, and that must rub off. It does, and he take he takes everything so personally as well. I mean, my success is his success. He really, he really wants me to do well, you know, which is a great it's great motivation for me. So, what's your dream fight? If I could, if if there was a dream fight two years down the line, who would it be with? Mm -hmm. Hard hard one to tell at the moment. Um, the dream fight fight would obviously be having four of race time against who? I don't know, really, to be honest with you. But you still, but I mean, you're still aiming towards that level. That's still your hope and your own. I was hoping to have a busy year this year before the coronavirus situation. I think the plan was to try and more fights in this year. Hopefully, pay to know by the end of the year. But that's yeah. Not yeah. But, um, so, I mean, that's, yeah. I mean, yeah, we just have to see again. We're, a lot's going to depend on what happens with the virus. Is there a second spike? Is there a vaccine? Is there a treatment? I mean. We're all in the lap of the gods, realistically. You're not going to get any consistency without that, that's for sure. It's hard to really plan anything at the moment. Um, sort of try and keep and be ready when boxers are back. Yeah, now, one thing that I know you have had issues with that some boxers do, ticket selling has been hard for you at times, hasn't it? Yeah, oh, it's the hardest part. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's difficult. And, I mean, w w did you sell the most tickets you ever did? Was your debut your biggest ticket selling night? Um, I think my second fight was actually my, my biggest seller, I think. Uh, but then it was, I think the second fight, that the fact that I boxed my second fight, I'd actually boxed many years ago anyway. So it was sort of like, I think that was a bit of an incentive for people to come down there. Yeah, even to see it. Like a bit of a rivalry fight. But yeah, that was... That was, <laughs> it was a good fight. I remember the fight. It was a good fight as well. It was good yeah, well, uh, he didn't, he, he fought, brought about 30, 30 fans down with him or something as well. That's so. right. A good buzz. Yeah, that was it. Was good. So, I mean, so realistically, how far away do you think you are now? I know you're not. You're not. A, the thing is, although you haven't been active, you're still only 24 years of age. You're still a yeah. very, very young man. So you've still got plenty of time ahead. I mean, in your head, you must have a plan. How many fights or what time do you think you're going to be ready to fight for your first title? Um, again, like I say, I, it, it's hard to really tell. I've only had four fights. I, I would hope to sort of be in a position for maybe an eliminator after sort of maybe six or seven fights, you know, look to get the first 10 rounder in for an eliminator yeah. and go from there. Uh, but yeah. sort of the middleweight division is so competitive anyway. And there's a yeah. lot of trying to sort of get for that southern area. So. But is it yeah. going to be super middle that you're going to fight for titles at? It will be middle or super middle. With the titles, it's a day before weighing as well, which means it'll be easier for me to make the make the middleweight. I think I, like, I'm a big middleweight anyway, hitting that 72 kilo, being six foot three. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, my issue would be if it, if you went to a big title at suit, I remember um, John Main Smile coming down and fighting at super middle for a title. He weighed 13 stone seven on the day. The problem, with, the problem with super middle fights at a higher level, these guys are going to weigh 13 stone plus on the day. And they would probably be a little bit too big for you, I think. At, at that. It would be great, great for the titles. Um, yeah. Same for me, then, like, I, I'd put on that weight. Once I'm in the ring, I'd be heavier than what was on the scales. Yeah, of course. Uh, being a big middleweight anyway. Well, I'll say, as a middleweight, I think you'd be quite, you know, a massive advantage. It just means getting the weight down safely, doesn't it, to do that? And I, I think with a bit Consistency with a fight. That's what I struggle as well. The consistency with fights. There's been so much gaps in between. Um, trying to stay very close to a weight limit for that long period of time has been harder. But once we get some consistency in there, it'll be a lot easier to maintain it. Yeah, momentum. Momentum is key, isn't it? And and yeah. um, hopefully that's that's the key. So yeah. So what are you looking forward to seeing boxing behind closed doors in July, August, or do you think it's going to be a damp squib? What do you think? 
I, I'm 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 fifty fifty on that at the moment. I I don't know how it how it's going to to work. I was actually talking to someone about it. As a boxer, we rely a lot on I think the crowd, the atmosphere. You know, when you're going into that last round, you're feeling that fatigue. It's good to have a bit of push. So I, I don't know how well people are going to do without without the atmosphere there. So it'll be interesting to see how it how it works how it goes. Yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, I mean, again, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see live sport, but it's like the bo- the football on Wednesday. It's not going to. I don't think it will be the same. I think I'll find it very difficult to be the yeah. same. But something That's is better than nothing, and it's all we can have at the moment, isn't it? So it is what it is. <laughs> well, Bradley, thanks a lot for joining us. Great to speak with you, my friend. Awesome, and hopefully you look after yourself, and I'll catch up with you soon. Hey, mate, see you later, mate. Take care, mate. Bye bye. That was Bradley Spencer, four and zero, big prospect. Just needs some momentum. He, on his last fight, he did beat an undefeated fighter. So he's moving in the right direction, moving, uh, moving up the rankings. He's now ranked in the top. He's ranked in the top 40 in the UK. Uh, and after four fights, that's a very, very decent level, level of boxing. He just needs a bit of momentum and will be heading for titles. So from two boxers, we're now going to have a chat with a trainer, uh, a man that I've got the utmost respect for. Um, he's, we'll talk about it in a minute, but he's, done an absolute massive improvement job on a boxer he's taken on recently. And I always say, you can judge a fighter by what he does with the box and whether he can improve them or not. And uh, if it's a trainer, and if you've got a trainer that's been able to do what Brian's done, I think he showed that he's a top-notch trainer in the making. Let's have a chat with him. Waiting for Brian to join us. Brian, how, are you? how are you, Mr. Steve? I'm good, my friend. What have you been up to? Uh, not much, mate. Not much while we've been in this uh, been in this situation. But you know, what can you do? You just got to go with the flow, haven't you? So, is bo- what, what do you do apart from training boxes? Is, is is boxing and that sort of side your full time job, or do you have something else outside boxing? Uh, yeah, no. I wish it was my full time job, but unfortunately, it's not. What do I work in the? Um, uh, the photography lighting side of things, you know, studio shoots and stuff like that. I, I kind of do the uh, do the lighting setups and stuff like that for photo shoots. So, yeah, it's not too bad. I've been doing it for a long time now. I've been 20, 24 years or something like that. That's new. I didn't know that. So, so, uh, is that yeah. But has that all been shut down as well, though, I guess, hasn't it, in the lockdown? Yeah, it's, it's all been shut down. Things like uh, photography studios, you get basically enclosed rooms with loads of heat, loads of people running around and photographers and models and whatnot. So it's just one, it's, it's one of those industries where it's very, you know, people are going to be very close together all the time, all day long, you know? Yeah. you know? So, so it's one of them ones that like took the hit. I'm on furlough. So, you know, luckily for the, for the company, it didn't take too much of a hit, but yeah. it was nice for the first three or four weeks. I must say, you think to yourself, this is nice three or four weeks. I'm getting paid, you know, on furlough, but that kind of novelty wears off, and because you can't do other things as yeah. well, it kind of starts to it starts, it starts to wear on you, you know. So yeah. I'm just sitting, I'm just I'm just waiting for my boss to give me the, the go ahead to get back to normal. So tell us about your journey in boxing, how you got into boxing, and everything else. Oh, I've I've, I've been into boxing, you know, my whole life since I was a kid. Uh, I never actually boxed myself. But I was I was always more into the training stuff. Don't get me wrong, I've done you know plenty of sparring. I was always I was I was sparring partners for people and stuff like that. But I never actually competed myself as as a professional. Uh, I was always kind of more into you know saying to people, you should keep your hand up, do this, do that, try this, try that. You know, even even sparring, I'd I would even say to people that I was sparring, um, I'm 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 finding it easy to hit you to the body and stuff like this. You know, and and in the end, I just kind of I just kind of turned my eye more to the training side of thing. I was to help, uh, yeah, I was helping Barry out when um, at State of Mind Fitness. Uh, I mean, I've known Barry my whole life, you know. So we was he, he kind of come back from the Marines, opened up a gym, and I went down there to train, and we kind of just ended up kind of doing the training thing together, the boxing thing together. Mm-hmm. Um, he took on Char- he took on Charlie Rice. Yeah. He was the first pro at the gym, and he just you know he needed another kind of pro licensed person in the gym sent me on my course i got my license about six years ago and uh i've not looked back since really i do a lot of, i do as you know yourself i do um i do cuts 
Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a cuts man. I started out as, as like second in, you know, gum shield man, bucket man. Then went into cuts, started getting thing into cuts and then uh, got more into the training side of things. And, and yeah, and it, it kind of blossomed from there. So. so where did you, where did you pick up your, your knowledge for say on the training side? Was it something that you just watched various people? Did you learn yourself? Are you doing it on the job? What? Yeah, I, I can't, as a, if, 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 you know, if you follow a sport, if you follow a sport and you, and you, you watch it all the time and you study it, I mean, of course I used to go to boxing shows and all that kind of stuff. But I, I see what was going on in the corners, what was going on backstage, what you, how you acted to how you had to be. And then obviously once you get in that position to do it yourself, there's a lot of, that's kind of like your first foot on the ladder. And you kind of, you, you just, you kind of just pick things up as you go along. I mean, I've been fortunate enough to be in a changing room with people like, and in the corner with people like Mick Williamson and, and Alec Wilkie and, I, and I, you know, and uh, uh, Eddie Muscat, people like that. And you think just in your, I'm always, I always used to ask them stuff and they would never fail to kind of give me tips and just telling me and advice. And no matter how small it was, I took it on board and I kind of used it. But then I kind of threw it and I, you know, thrown my own kind of, uh, my own knowledge and the experience I had into it. And it just kind of blossomed from there and I just kind of, kind of intermingled everything together and you know now I'm, I'm i'm confident you know that i can do things by myself and yeah and it's uh yeah, I'm, I'm, re I'm really enjoying it you know and i'm not just saying it here i've told you this myself and you the job you've done with daniel mendez is absolutely exceptional i mean in my oh, opinion, thanks, like, you've done a brilliant yeah. job and the way you've turned him around i mean uh, you know he won the southern area then had a disastrous performance against nick parper but since yeah. you had him he just seems to have that extra thing about him that he just didn't have before. Um, yeah. Well, you feel you've improved him as well, don't you? Well, you know what? You, you can ask Kev. Every time every time I have a fighter in the ring, I always go to someone like Kev or I go to yourself and I just say, you know, I do say, I say, don't bullshit me. Do you think that I'm, you know, sort of, excuse my French, but do you know, can you, can, you, can you see a difference? You know what I mean? And stuff like that. And I'm always getting positive feedback and I kind of feed off of that as well. Do you know what I mean? I, I do ask people, I just say, listen, if it, if it was a terrible performance and you don't think he's improved, tell me. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I like to hear what other people, although you shouldn't really care about what other people think, you know, it's nice to have another expert opinion on board. You know, someone could say, you know, his, his footwork weren't all, kind of wasn't all there. And then, you know what I mean? But the thing is with Dan, when he, when he came to me, I was his cut man anyway, so I'd done his mm. corner for, I think I'd done his corner for about a year and a half, two years maybe. Mm. So I kind of got to know Dan then. And uh, after he lost to Nick Parper, he, he he called me and said, you know, shall we kind of go further with his cuts thing and do you want to become my trainer? And it's different going from from a lower level and then taking on someone that's been uh, like a Southern Area champion who knows his stuff. He's been around. He knows the boxing ring. He knows the game. So it kind of, I had to kind of push my game up as well. So it was like a, it was like a boost to me. And, you know, it, and, and as I say, Dan's really... Dan's really good, you know. You, you're Southern Area Cruiserweight Champion and stuff like this. I think he's, I think he's only lost two fights in all, and uh, one of those was ages ago, a split decision in another cut. Things like Czechoslovakia or something like that. So, um, you know, you, you, you're taking on someone that's, that's got, that's got credentials, just got like championship kind of status. You know what I mean? So, and uh, I didn't, didn't change too much from what he'd done. I could obviously see what I, what I'd love him to do, but I couldn't. I couldn't say that while I was in the corner because I wasn't his trainer, you know. I'm just there to do his cuts and, you know, keep him keep him safe kind of thing. But uh, once I got my hands onto him, I could say, you know, do this, do that, lengthen his jab, you know, don't be too far away, work on distance, you know, work on that backhand, work on moving your head a little bit more. You know what I mean? And I think when he kind of applied it into into his sparring, he was fine, he was seeing himself that it was working and then he would use it because you've only got to tell him something once and he, he picks it up. He's a really level-headed lad. You literally, I say lad, he's like, he's, he's, he's like 34. I'm talking like he's like 21 or something. <laughs> but, um, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he's a really good lad. But um, yeah, it's just, it's kind of thing. It's, it's like you, we work on something. If it works, then we just use it all the time. And even if you don't use it, it's something that he's got there if he needs it. Do you know what I mean? Because you never know how a fight's going to turn out. And what are so, you, I mean, so, having him under your charge now, what, what are your aspirations for him? Uh, of course, we'd like to get another big fight. As I say, he's, he, he hasn't got to, uh, He knows this as well. I know this, and you know this. As I say, when you get to 34, 
you are kind of like at the twilight of of your boxing career. So we just want, you know, anything that comes our way, but we, we would like to kind of, you know, really push on. Another title shot would be fantastic. You know what I mean? So, but that's this is this is when uh, this is your kind of job, Steve. You know, you exactly. kind of exactly. this is your this is your thing here. We trust in you. So, yeah, and, got, uh, yeah got, you've I've never, you've, you've mind, never I've got something in mind. I've got something in mind for him, but we have to get back to we have to get back to some sort of normality first, don't we? That's the problem. yeah. Well, that's right. That's right. I mean, he's been he's been he's been keeping busy. He's still doing three runs a week. Um, he does a little bit of groundwork as well. <clears throat> yeah, he's he's got um. He sent me a video of day. He's got this like punch bag in his front room, and he's like moving that around and he's he's hitting that. So he's keeping in, and you know, I mean, you've seen his physique. He's he's really fit. He's he's like naturally fit anyway. There's not an ounce of fat on him. So so the weight's never going to be a trouble because he boxes around eighty seven anyway. So it's, yeah. it's, it's 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 a little bit shy of the ninety the ninety kilo mark of of cruiserweight, but oh. it's not it's ninety kilos, isn't it? So yeah. So if he, yeah, he boxes about eighty seven. So it's it's never. He never got to worry about his weight, but you know we, we do we do jump on the scale, so he goes in there nice and nice and strong and nice and quick. So he's yeah. keeping himself fit. So you never know what's going to happen. You've got to keep yourself fit because you know you could get a call up with two weeks' notice once everything kind of gets back to some sort of normality. So exactly, and it might be the right fight well, if he's fit. And some of these cruiserweights are not as good as their records, and he could go in there and. Uh, you know, people think that the Nick Parker fight was Daniel Mendes. Yeah. They're, they're totally utterly wrong. So, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Sure. Well, you know, every, everybody has an off day. You know, everybody has an off fight. And it just so happened to be, you know, the first defence of his uh, mm. of his Southern Area title. I mean, he, he could have gone in there uh, the way he was against Danny Cousins when he won the title. You know, it would have been a completely different story. But we, yeah. we he knows this. He, he knows it. He knows it wasn't a good day out of the office. I know it wasn't a good day out of the office. So, We've just yeah. um, we kind of got over that hurdle. And we've just pu- just kind of pushed on, you know. We've had a couple of fights. I think he's had a couple of fights since that, and uh, he said he feels better. Everybody's saying he looks better. So, you know, at the, at the moment, everything's everything's going uphill, which is nice. Yeah, exciting times ahead. Well, let's hope let's hope there's many good days at the office coming up, Ryan. So let's, let's hope I hope so, mate. I really hope so. But then, as I say, that's down to you. We kind of go by what you say. You haven't you haven't done far too far wrong with us uh, at the moment, Steve. So you know. Yeah. We'll keep, we'll, good, we'll keep going. We'll keep going. The US, yeah, mate. London, US London boys have had a few champions now, so we're, we're, we're oh, still that's working. it now. Yeah, we're getting we're getting a taste for it. We're getting a taste for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot for joining us, my friend. You look after yourself. You too, mate. Stay safe. Take, Take it easy. Care. Take care, mate. Bye bye. And that's Brian G, one of the nicest guys in boxing, also a tr- an up and coming trainer. <clears throat> if you're stuck in West London and you need, you are looking for a trainer down at the state of mind. He's one of the best trainers, along with Barry O'Connor and Sean Earls down there who work down there. They're doing a great job down there. So state of mind fitness in Hammersmith, it's a great place to go. But let's now move on. We're now moving out of the area and we're now going to be joined by Sajid Abid, who uh, has had a colourful career so far, but the best is definitely yet to come. Let's have a word with Sajid. Wait for him to join us. Steve, how are you, mate? I'm good, mate. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad, buddy. Thanks for having me, man. That's what I'm saying. Thanks for coming on. So you've been busy working during the lockdown, haven't you? Just get yeah, sort of exactly. I mean, about? pretty much, yeah. So I, I work for the NHS. I'm still grinding nine to five, still trying to fit in my training, you know, whilst I can. In fact, I've just literally finished training in the park now. That's why I'm in the car right now. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So what are you, for people that don't know you, tell them what you actually do within the medical profession. Tell them. Mm. So I, I work in a surgery. Um, I deal with uh, medication requests, prescriptions. Um, I liaise with pharmacies, hospitals, nursing homes, patients themselves, um, just to ensure they get their medication in a, you know, in right time, really. And have you, I mean, have you found this particular, from a work perspective, have you found things quite stressful during the last few um, months? Yes, to be fair, you can imagine the, the workloads increased massively, considering everyone just wanted their medication as soon as possible. You know, at one point, people thought they, they couldn't get their medication, so it's just like, it was just an onslaught of requests. But, you know, now, now it's getting a lot more, it's, it's regulating a lot more, so it's just kind of getting back to normal. So it's, it's all right now, it's all right. Yeah, so we so you had um, a situation in your career where you had eight straight wins, and then you took a big fight 
over in Jeddah, didn't you? Back in yeah, yeah. Well, about a year ago now, isn't it? A year ago, yeah. In but fact, it, yesterday, uh, it would have been a year ago yesterday, I actually flew out to Saudi for the month. It's crazy, honestly. It's like time just flies. God, but I mean, tell us about the experience that you had out there and what, what it was all about. Yeah, honestly, it was amazing. I mean, to be fair, it, it came out of nowhere. It was, it was, look how I managed to get the opportunity. Um, it all came down to a friend tagging me on Facebook. And um, from then, I didn't hear anything from it. I obviously contacted the guy who initially put the post on, um, gave him my email address. It must have been about a couple of weeks after. And then get an email saying, Saj, um, can you fly it to Saudi next week? I'm like, what? Are you, are you serious? Like, next week? Like, yeah, we'll get your tickets sorted and everything, your visa and whatnot. We need you there for a month. I'm straight on the phone to my cousin, who's also my, my, my trainer. He's also my boss. So I'm like, listen, man, I, I need you to kind of hook me up. You'll get a trip to Saudi out of it if you do. But <laughs> um, So I need a month off work, like, next week. So, um, you know, the surgery has been really, really helpful in that sense where – they, they let me take that opportunity. Um, so it was, it was great. I mean, I was there for a month. Obviously, the result didn't come out as we wanted it to, or it's a learning curve. I was looking at a learning curve. I mean, the experience itself, like, I was treated like a celebrity over there. Everyone was coming up to me like, Ahmed Khan, are you Ahmed Khan? I'm like, mate, yeah, forget it. I'll be Ahmed Khan for the day. I don't mind. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, it was brilliant. I mean, I was definitely getting uh, mistaken for Ahmed Khan a few times, but I'm not complaining. <laughs> it's a great experience in all. Yeah, so now, I mean, since then you've been back. You had a you had a fight in March, obviously, your first fight mm-hmm. back. And obviously it's all been shelved. I mean, what now for, for Sajid Abid the boxer? What next? What do you think? What's your plans? What's in your head? So I, I want to drop down and wait. I want to fight at super light or lightweight. So that's why I'm currently still training, trying to maintain, you know, my fitness as it is. To be honest, it's, you know, when it comes to fight week, or should I say the last four weeks of fight camp, that's where you tend to lose most of the weight. So I haven't really been focusing on it that much at the moment. It's just trying to maintain my fitness. I mean, when, when boxing resumes, I'm definitely stepping up in rounds um, and potentially a, you know, area title um, under your guidance um, yeah. next year or when, or, you know, when boxing resumes. Yeah, when it resumes. I mean, what are you- what are you? What's your feeling on um, the resum- Everybody's got an opinion. What's, I mean, what's your feeling on resumption of boxing? Do you do you feel that boxing is going to be too hard to to go with in small hall while whilst the virus is out there, or do you think it's workable? To be fair, I mean, considering most small halls are dependent on ticket sales, I don't think it's possible at the moment. You know, we're trying to we're trying to limit the amount of people together in one venue. So you've got to use your common sense of that. As, you know, as a fighter, as much as I want to say, yeah, forget it, I want to fight right now, forget it, I'll fight next week, you have to look at the logistics side of things. And it's like, it just won't work out in the promoter's favor or potentially the boxers. So, you know, I'm, I'm quite patient when it comes to these kind of things. As, you know, uh, so I'd, I'd tick along, keep my training going, and then just wait for the opportunity. Well, you're still very young. You're 25 years of age. So mm. in terms of that, there's no major rush at this stage. You're not going to pee at your peak for three more years. So, you know, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you're not, you're not, you know, fighters that are in their 30s, approaching mid-30s will be feeling more frustrated at the moment mm. because they need to get out. But, I mean, the, the realistically, as I've always said, we may not see boxing back to where we were till March next year. You know, who knows? We... You know, we just got to hope they come up with some sort of treatment and people can get their lives back to some sort of normality, don't we? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I know a few um, promoters are looking to do like a eight-man title fight, not title, eight-man, um, eight-man tournament. Um, yeah, I've seen that. That's, at the, of, that's at the end of August, yeah. Yeah, um, Clifton Mitchell, I think. he, he um, middleweights, yeah. Yeah, something like that. I mean, concepts like this, it's, it's a good idea, don't get me wrong, um, but it's one of those things, you don't know what will happen unless you actually try it, so... But the only problem with that, they, they, he will have, he will have a, a substantial backer, probably putting mm. in 50 grand for that night. Yeah, and, at minimum, you can imagine. Yeah, so you've got, you know, that, that can work if somebody wants to put their money in and back it. But these shows are only going to happen with backers or TV. It's not going to happen to somebody. It just isn't possible without that. So, yeah, of course. Um, but we, we'll see. I mean, it, so, there's a lot, you know, say who we're only what we started this lockdown three months ago feels like an eternity but you know mm-hmm. we go three months down the line a lot of things could have changed couldn't it we we just don't know exactly you don't know you just have to kind of take each day as it comes and would you 
Would you at the moment, would you as a boxer, if you got a call for a TV fight and you was going, going in deep, would you take mm. that this summer or would you rather wait and just rebuild I'd, your career? I'd firstly, um, you know, I would discuss it with my team, the likes of you, Kevin, Ifran, we'll talk. And if you guys, as my peers, you know, think it's the right move for me, then I'll do it. I mean, like, I... I will stay ready for a fight regardless. And if you guys think it's the right move for me, I'll do it. Yeah. No, it's it's a difficult call. And again, some fights can be the right opportunity. Some fights are not. It's, mm. It all depends on what comes up. I mean, I've had so many discussions with fighters over various fights. Some some we're happy to take. Some we're not. It's just, it's a, it, it all depends on what it is and how it is, doesn't it? I mean, you've had the experience. I think now you need to go and win titles. If you can take a big opportunity and it makes sense and... That's yeah. great in the meantime, isn't it? Yeah, no, exactly. As long as it makes sense, you know, we'll go for it. Like, yeah. you know, considering considering the loss I took, I, I, I look at myself as a better fighter. And um, so I'm more than more, more than willing to go, go in the deep end, to be honest. The zero, the zero is so overrated. It's so overrated. Yeah, exactly. It's like the moment that zero goes, all, all the pressure just off your back. You can actually just start enjoying your boxing without having to worry about, you know, losing that zero. So, if anything, I feel like I'm more of a dangerous boxer now that I'm actually starting to enjoy my boxing. So, it's, you know, I can't wait till boxing gets back if to you, normal. If you look at some of the fights, I mean, Johnny Nelson lost his first few fights to become a world champion. Tim Bradley, I think, lost his first fight or two. I don't think, I think Pacquiao either drew or got beat early on. It's Anthony Collin lost to Yusuf Alamedia Journey and yeah. became a world champion. It's, it's so overrated when you look back in history. Mm. It's just a number that it's is a, used by yeah. tv net you know it's, 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 it's a speak. marketing method yeah it's, it's a marketing method it's like if you have someone who let's be honest has all the ability but he's got that one defeat against someone who's not as good but you know he has that zero he's untouched at the moment who's more easy to market the guy who's yeah. not in touch at the moment so it's it's looked at, it's looked at that perspective yeah exactly but as you know that's not what it you know i think i think we'll see at the end of your career that that loss will have not made a scrap of difference to you because sometimes yeah, losses don't, you know, so let's see how we go. So it's really good to speak to you. Thanks a lot for joining me. And no, I'll pleasure's mine, mate, honestly. And we'll touch base in a few weeks off of uh, off Fingers TV, crossed, so mate. Really good yeah, to speak to you, honestly. my friend. You take and yourself, care. Steve, mate. You take, take care, buddy. Care. Bye. Bye-bye. And thanks to Saj. Thanks to Brian G. Thanks to everybody else. Um, just, we did have a few questions piling through while we were on. Um, but this is about interviewing the boxers. We do do a Facebook Live where we do do questions and we answer every question. So we're more than happy to do that it's on Sunday evenings. So definitely, uh, definitely come on and speak to us. Somebody else just put marketing, come on, man. Um, I presume he's talking about promoting without any money. Um, I always say to everybody, if you think that's how it works, it's really easy. Get a promoter's license, have a go. It's very, very difficult. So, um, it's, it's about you can't market small hall i'm afraid it doesn't work like that without the backing of external funding sources thanks a lot anyway for watching and we'll speak to you um we'll speak to you on here next monday where we've got some interesting guests and we'll be as i say facebook live on a sunday night if you want to pose some questions to us thanks a lot for watching